Hey guys, it's Sydney here and welcome back to another video. Thank you, Yuki. <laughs> Today is a very exciting video because I am going to be opening up this package that has newt eggs inside. More specifically, Chinese fire ballad newt eggs. So this is the first time I've actually opened up an animal that I've been sent in the mail. I'm a little bit scared. Um, even though I've sent animals myself, I, I used to breed snails, I used to send snails around the country. But I've just never actually brought something, you know, from a different um, area of New Zealand before. I've been wanting to get fire belly newts for quite a long time and I've been waiting for it to be breeding season because it is actually currently winter here in New Zealand. And some eggs popped up for sale, so I thought I would get them. There is 10 eggs in here and they are close to hatching I believe. So I'm really excited. I've been having a lot of fun setting up my newt tank that I'll show you guys soon. It's nothing too impressive at the moment um, and would definitely change throughout having the newts because once they do come out of water they do need more land um, so obviously I will change it to suit that. But at the moment it is fine and I'm really excited. I've been wanting newts for such a long time. I have raised axolotl eggs before so I'm kind of experienced with that. And they seem to be quite similar in that sense and even the eggs look pretty much the same as eggs, little eggs, so yeah, I'm really excited. So I want to film a bit of a series on the journey of me raising these eggs. There probably will be separate parts, like I'll probably film a second part of this series and in this video I'll just show you guys the eggs and hopefully they'll be okay. <laughs> so they just came in this little postal bag and they also were delayed by one day. They were supposed to arrive overnight, but there was shipping delays for some reason with the airport. Um, which isn't the seller's fault, so they were a day late, but I don't think that should affect them too much. Being eggs, they are pretty hardy, um, and in case I do get some comments about how you shouldn't ship animals, this is actually not an uncommon thing. In fact, all the animals you see in pet stores, they don't just appear there, they all get shipped there from other countries a lot of the time, like fish do get shipped from different countries. So it's really not an uncommon thing. People are always shocked about hearing animals being shipped, but it's actually really normal and it's actually better to get an animal shipped to you by a breeder instead of a pet store because a reputable breeder will often care about their animals a lot more than pet stores and a lot of the, a lot of the animals that do come into pet stores that are shipped to them, a lot of them do die because of how they're treated. Sorry, my birds are being quite loud at the moment because it is the morning. Usually I don't film in the morning. I mean, I probably prefer them to be shipped in a box to be a bit more secure, but at the same time, this person seems to be quite a, a well-known breeder in the New Zealand newt community, so they probably know what they're doing more than I do, but let's open this up. I am a bit nervous, but I think it'll be fine. All right, they are in this water bottle here. They did actually send me a picture of this too before they shipped it out. Oh my God, look at the little beans! Oh, oh my God, I can see their little gills. Oh my God, look at them. They are like really close to hatching too. It looks so much like axolotls do because they even have the little gill frills axolotls have. I'm just gonna put them in this container first so I can get it good look at them. So this is often how people do ship eggs like this, so it actually doesn't seem too bad. I mean, they're, they seem pretty secure in there, so let's put them in this container. Oh no! <gasps> Some of them hatched! Oh my god! Oh my god, okay, wait, what? Okay, uh... <laughs> okay, let me get a closer look at them, okay? So they've got ten eggs. Well, there were supposed to be eggs, but um, it looks like three of them have hatched. Is that okay? Oh yeah, there it goes. Oh my god, okay. So, <laughs> three of them hatched while they were on their way here. I don't know when they did hatch, but they seem to be fine. Oh my god, look at them! Oh my god, they're so cute. So here are all the eggs. We can see they're pretty close to hatching. So as you can see, um, while they're babies, they look a lot like axolotl babies do. They have like the gill frills and stuff. Look how tiny this one is. Little baby. Little baby. Oh, look at them, they're so cute! But obviously, unlike axolotls, uh, these guys do eventually come out of the water and they can breathe both in and out of water, which is why you need to have both land and water in their tanks. They don't necessarily need food until about a few days after they've already hatched because they still are absorbing their like egg sac. So these guys probably won't be hungry, but I'll probably start breeding brine shrimp now because it can take a, a day or two for brine shrimp to hatch. So I'm gonna start doing that today and I'll show you guys how I do that. But yeah, <laughs> oh my God, they're so cute. I did not expect 
three of them to already have hatched. <laughs> so anyways, here's a tank that's set up for them. Honestly, I'm wondering if it'll be easier to keep them in this container for a while still, just so it's easier to feed them and stuff, because I'll probably will lose them in here. <laughs> I'll figure that out, but yeah, this is what it looks like so far. It has a little sponge filter over here. Like I said, this definitely will evolve throughout owning them. Um, obviously, once the newts do come out of water, they spend quite a lot of time in the water for a like a couple of years or so. So this will become more of a land tank than a water tank at some point. And then after that, they end up going into the water again for most of their lives. So they kind of, you know, go back and forth. Um, so it will change a lot. This is just how it looks like at the moment. And I think it's pretty, it's pretty okay for now. All right, so I'm going to set up a brine shrimp hatchery now and I'll show you guys how I do that. Okay, so basically all you need is the top of a bottle like this. It's best to use with the top part because it has this kind of cone shape and it makes it easier to push the water through with a uh, air pump. I also use rock salt in my brine shrimp hatcheries. I just use a small amount of it and then also you're gonna want your brine shrimp eggs. Depending on the temperature of the water, it's gonna take them longer to hatch. So if your water's a bit colder, it would take longer for them to hatch. So what I actually like to do to keep the water a good warm temperature is I will just float the hatchery into one of my tropical tanks so I'm gonna put it in this small tank I'm just gonna float it in there and that will keep the water staying warm I also I just use tap water this is just tap water in here um, it doesn't really matter if you use uh, tap water or bottled water and you don't really need to use fish water it doesn't really matter if it's like cycled or not with fry and shrimp they are completely different to normal fish it's just clipped on the side here now and then I just add uh, basically a pinch of uh, pink salt or rock salt and just add that in there and let it dissolve before you put any eggs in there and then you're gonna want an air pump I just have this little one that I hope still works <laughs> and some airline tube as well so let's plug this in and see if it actually works I think it's working all right and then that's pretty much it it's gonna want to leave this air pump going so it creates a lot of movement this is how much eggs I'm adding this probably will be like more than enough so yeah just pop that in there there they go. So hopefully they'll hatch by tomorrow, maybe the day after that. Since this tank is a tropical tank, it should be pretty quickly. So I've just had a bit of a talk with some other breeders about raising them, and from what I understand, it can be quite a lot easier to raise them in a container like this one. So that's what I'm going to do, just so I can keep an eye on them. Um, give them water changes every day and so I know they're eating and stuff like that I definitely think I would lose them in this tank and I wouldn't be able to keep an eye on them properly So that's what I'm gonna do until they're bigger and while I'm at it I'm gonna give them a water change because I haven't actually changed their water yet. What is Toothless doing over there? <laughs> She's like playing in the bubbles <laughs> Toothless What are you doing? <laughs> are you excited about having nude friends? Well, too bad because they're not going to be your friends because you would eat them. Look how tiny. Little baby. So I put all the eggs into here and the babies and I'm just going to fill this up with some fresh water. It's now filled with fresh water. I'm just going to add my dechlorinator which is prime. And if you're wondering, um, no, it doesn't matter that this water isn't like cycled because I'm going to be changing the water, 100% of water changes every single day. So in that case the water is always fresh so it doesn't matter if it's like not cycled. But obviously this tank is cycled and ready to go, but I won't be using that until they're older. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this part of the video. Hopefully I'll make a part two when they're a bit bigger and like showing what I feed them or stuff like that. Because there's a lot of different kind of live foods you can feed them. Alright guys, so I'm filming this the next day now. I just wanted to show you guys that I got some micro worms for the newts. The brine trap have not hatched yet, but they should hatch probably tonight or tomorrow. Um, I don't think any new babies have hatched. Look at this guy though, he's like sitting on a leaf. Also, before I put micro worms in, I'm just gonna quickly do a water change because I've not done that yet today. All right, and then we've got the micro worms. So basically, micro worms are pretty much self-explanatory. They're very teeny tiny worms and there's thousands, millions probably of them on this cup. You can see teeny tiny worms. Um, so these are okay as like, a food to have with live brine shrimp. They should not be the only food you're feeding them. Definitely the best food you can feed baby newts and pretty much any baby aquatic animal is live brine shrimp, but this can just be a little bit of an extra, you know? So I'm just gonna 
Oh, they do smell very bad though. So I'm just gonna get some on the side of this. And then put that in there. And you probably didn't even see that happen because they're so tiny. It's kind of easy to use your finger, so I'm probably gonna do that even though it's disgusting. Can you see the tiny worms on my fingy? I still don't know if they are ready to eat, but I just thought I'd give them some food any- Wait. Did two of them just hatch? Did this happen while I was doing the water change? Did they just hatch? I don't know if I caught them hatching on video, but two of them literally just hatch. So yeah, I'm not sure if they'll eat yet, but now there is food for them if they do want to eat. This is the true outro for now. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video of these guys, which I don't know when that will be. Um, maybe it will be once they go into the new tank. I don't know. Thank you for watching guys. See ya.